Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone here today. I'd like to welcome you to Severn Church. If you're a visitor, we have visitors' cards in front of you. Please fill one out and drop it in the offering plate. Let's go through a few announcements this morning. The men are meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30 here at the church. Tuesday night at 7 p.m. is a session meeting. And then Wednesday night is Bible study here at the church and the choir practice at 7.45. There will be a congregational meeting immediately following the service this morning. And we vote to recommend Mr. Harold Bedfield to the position of elder of the church. The Joyful Hand Circle next meeting will be Tuesday, October the 14th at 6.15. There's a new member lunch on October the 19th here at the church. Now, we also have a seafood fellowship supper and dedication service here at church, October 25th, Saturday from 4 to 6. Tickets are $15 and they'll be on sale right after the service this morning and for the next couple of Sundays. Uh, in the kitchen area, Faith will be uh, collecting the money and giving me the tickets. Barbara has an announcement. This year for our children's uh, fall activity, we're going to take them to the Green Hand Farm Park. I don't know if you've heard that, but they have uh, corn maze, they have all kinds of things for the kids to do. We're going to meet up there, this is October the 25th. We're going to meet there at 11. It's right there beside where Peasley School is, and you go back in there in that farm. Um, We'll have directions in the bulletin and we'll have more information for you. But it's going to be trunk or treat. So parents will be coming with their kids. They'll be bringing in their trunk. They're different. If they want to, they can decorate their trunk. And we're going to go to the garden park and the kids uh, pick up goodies. And we will provide sandwiches and drinks. And we will be providing the admission ticket. So if you are going to have your child go, or if you're going to have your grandkids go, or a neighbor go, please see me. We're going to sign up, come in here going, so we we'll don't know how much we need to provide food and drink. And we're going to have a wonderful time. We'll be there from 11 o'clock until we get done. They have hay rides, they have bouncy houses, they have all kinds of stuff for the kids to do. So we're going to have a really good time. That's October the 25th, and that's for ages, um, well, Whatever. <laughs> Officially, it's K through third. I mean, it's fifth. But the truth is, is if anybody can come and participate with us, just sign up. I'll have a sign up sheet on the board and we'll have reminders in the bulletin. Thank you. All right, do we have any birthdays this week? No birthdays. All right, the children. Yeah. Good. Do you have one? Oh, Sandra's got one. Happy birthday to Sandra.
Shalom, Shirley. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that we're able to be here today, Lord, worshiping your beauty and your holiness. God, we thank you for the music that we've heard so far and for the blessings. Lord, we pray for those that are sick. We pray for Doris Asbury, Arnie Bryson, Tommy Dane, Ms. Edwards, Helen Walker, Megan Harris, Phyllis Harwood, Bessie Holloway, Kenneth Sterling, Joyce Williams, Kenneth Williams, Sadie Williams, the family of Howard Berry, and Lottie Smith. And God, we know that you can touch each and every one of these in a special way that you will. God, we pray for that this morning. Lord, this morning as we concentrate on, on your sacrifice on the cross as we observe the Lord's Supper, God, I pray that it might be a special time for each and every one of us that we can stop and just reflect on what you did for us on that old rugged cross. Bless the rest of the service now, Lord, that it might honor and glorify you in all that we say and do. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
going to be on the Lord's Supper. So what I'll ask you to do is clear your mind of all the things that you have to do this afternoon. Clear your mind of all the thoughts and things that would take you away from concentrating on what the Lord has done for you. Because the Lord in Psalm 23, David wrote, The Lord is my shepherd. And today the Lord is our shepherd. If you've accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we are like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way. And the Lord laid on Him, the great shepherd, the sins of us all. That's what Christ did on that cross. He took my sin and your sin. And today we rejoice. We remember His sacrifice. We also rejoice because this is a table of remembrance and a table of future hope. Because we know He's coming again. And it will be soon. So obviously if Christ is our shepherd, we are the sheep. Are we not? The sheep... Sometimes, so let me step on your toes, but sometimes sheep aren't too bright. <laughs> sheep rely on their shepherd. Well, a shepherd can have a flock of sheep, and then he can hold a stick to the ground about that high off, and the first sheep will jump over the stick. Then the next one will jump over the stick. And the shepherd will take the stick away, and the sheep will come up behind them and still jump in the air, even though there's nothing there. Why? Because a sheep relies on its flock. And it will remember what the front sheep had done. Now, goats don't need a shepherd. Goats are strong-willed, hard-headed, they go anywhere they want to go. But a sheep needs its flock and its shepherd in order to survive. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd has a very important task. He has to look out for his sheep. He has to make sure that they have a place to eat, a place to drink. If they get wounded, the shepherd will nurture and heal the sheep that is wounded. Sometimes a shepherd will have a wayward sheep, us, that strays away from the flock and away from the shepherd. The shepherd will find that one sheep, as the Lord told in his parable, will the shepherd not leave the ninety and nine and go and find the one sheep that has strayed away. The shepherd will find that sheep and will put it on his shoulder and carry it for days and for days. What he's teaching that sheep is that I am the shepherd and you need me. A sheep out on its own will not find a place to eat, a place to drink. And the wolves are out there, or the lions, that will attack it and kill it. So it needs to be close to the shepherd. You see the parallel I'm drawing, drawing this morning with you? And so he will take that sheep and he will wrap it around his neck. And he will walk and lead the other sheep. That sheep somehow knows he's being disciplined because he can't run away. But what he feels the most is the love of the shepherd. Then after a while, after he's carried it, he will put the sheep down. It will get right back in the flock and follow the shepherd as he walks. See, the shepherd loves the sheep. It becomes more, of a, more than just a job, as we'll learn in the scripture. And the, sheep, and the shepherd knows his sheep. He knows their bleeding of their voice. And he knows who they are. And they know his voice when he calls. And they come running. So what's the responsibility of the sheep to the shepherd? First of all, when the shepherd talks and beckons you to come, the sheep must come. They must have that relationship with their shepherd. Much like us, when the Lord calls, we are to respond. If a sheep has gone astray and hears the shepherd, the master's voice, much like us, 
the sheep must come and get back in with the fold. If we rebel, much like a sheep would, the Lord may discipline us. But even during the time of discipline, what does He do? He picks you up. And He draws you close to Him so that you will be healed both inside and out. And you feel the presence of the great shepherd. The shepherd has an intimate relationship with his sheep. At nighttime, the shepherd will lay down among the sheep with his rod and his staff. And it was Psalm 23 said, Thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. That's what the great shepherd does. That is what the great shepherd has done for us. Open your Bibles this morning. I'm going to read a few passages from John chapter 10. When Jesus is telling them that he is the great shepherd. And watch and listen to the attributes of the great shepherd. John chapter 10, beginning verse 11. John 10, verse 11. And see if the Lord today isn't your great shepherd. John chapter 10, beginning verse 11. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Did not the Lord do that for us? Isn't that why we have the Lord's Supper today? Because he laid down his life for us. Verse 12. The higher man is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. That's where it's a job. But our great shepherd cares very dearly for each and every one of you. He knows what's going on inside of you. He knows your hurts. He knows your sorrow. He knows your grief. He knows your joy. Because the great shepherd has an intimate relationship with you. Verse 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. You see, the great shepherd is only a shepherd to his sheep. If you have Christ in your heart today, Believe in Jesus Christ, you are one of his sheep. And what does he say? I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. That's not people who are outside of the faith who don't believe in Christ. They don't have a great shepherd today. But isn't it comforting to know that you have the great shepherd with you? That he is the great shepherd. Look at verse 15. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep. And when he's talking about other sheep, he's talking about the Gentiles. He's talking about you and me. Because Christ came to the Jews first, and the Jews rejected him. And he says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. In other words, there are other sheep out there to gather in. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. Now drop down to verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch him out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Isn't it great to know that the great shepherd has you? And he says here, no one can snatch you out of his hand. That, does, that means that 
Satan in all his trials and temptations cannot snatch you out of the hands of the great shepherd. For as the great shepherd is in front of the sheep and a wolf comes, he will risk his life to save his sheep. He will take his staff and he will take the rod and with both in his hands he will attack that wolf. If you remember David, before he, before he killed Goliath, and the king had him in there and said, well, you're not a warrior, what have you done? He said, but I'm a shepherd. And I take after my sheep. And one time a bear came, and I killed it with my slingshot. And next time a wolf came, and I killed it with my slingshot. Even David was willing to lay down his life for his sheep. And when our, our Savior went to that old rugged cross and they nailed Him to the cross and they put Him in the air, He was still our great shepherd. As people walked by and mocked Him and laughed at Him and spit on Him, He was still our great shepherd. When He said, It is finished, and He died, he was still our great shepherd. When they put him in the tomb, he was still our great shepherd. And when he rose again, he is still our great shepherd. He leads you, he walks with you, and he loves you so very much. And yes, he laid down his life for you. Why? So that you can have eternal life. If Christ had not raised, then this would be a memorial service only. But my dear friends, Christ rose from the grave, and because of that, it is a memorial service and a service of celebration. I can't wait to get to heaven and see our great shepherd. Because he'll say, I loved you through your entire life. I loved you when you hurt the most in your life. I was there with you. When you were panicking and, and anxious about your life and what would come next, I was there with you. No, you couldn't see me, but you felt that great peace that the great shepherd has as he puts his arm around you and draws you close. Jesus said, I am the great shepherd. We are going to celebrate that here today as we partake of the Lord's Supper. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, may this truly be an intimate time with us and you. Lord, if there's unconfessed sin in our life, I pray, Lord, right now that the people that are here, including myself, will confess it to you. Lord, as we partake of the cup and the bread, may we be mindful of the sacrifice and the words that you told us that you do this, remembrance of me, until I come again. God, thank you for eternal life and thank you for the sacrifice. In Jesus' holy and precious name.